part two of the community Core XY Rat Rig V Core 3 build. Today, we assemble the awesome kinematic bed and the ever modular print head. In case you didn't know, we're building a premium quality Core XY 3D printer kit, the Rat Rig V Core 3 which I recently started in part one, printing parts and completing the bulk of the assembly. In this video, we're gonna finish the mechanical assembly, including the three point magnetically mounted kinematic bed and the cleverly designed ever modular print head. But before that, since we've called this a community build, I'll address some frequent responses from the first video. Well, no one actually asked what a Core XY was, but I thought I would point to a resource I had. I have a video already which explains why printers like an Ender 5 are not Core XY, as well as Core XY characteristics, pros and cons, and why they're so sought after. A few people asked if a Rat Rig V Core 3 was suitable for beginners. To that I would say, the machine isn't really marketed towards beginners, but all of the steps in constructing it are quite simple, and there's nothing so far that I think would be too hard for the average person. If you were a beginner to the point of not having a printer to make your own parts, there's nothing to stop you from buying the printed parts when you place your order. And there's also a Facebook community you could lean on if you got stuck. So not intended for beginners, but still possible. In the previous video, I implied that Avoron 2.4 is a newer version of the other models. But as people correctly pointed out, each Voron model is unique. And I know this because one of my patrons is building Avoron 2.4 and another in the past has built this awesome Core XZ switch wire. Sorry for any confusion. At least 2 million people asked why I didn't pick a Voron for this build. As I pointed out in the first video, there's an abundance of high quality options when it comes to Core XY 3D printer kits. I picked the Rat Rig because not only did I like the design and feature list, but several of my patrons were building them and suggested I give them a try. One factor that really appealed to me was the ability to order everything I needed as a kit from a single shop whereas a Voron requires you to source everything yourself or risk a kit from AliExpress, which I hear are a bit hit and miss. So far, I'm satisfied with my choice, but it is the internet, so unfortunately, some folks are arguing in the comments over which printer is best. To them, I say relax and just celebrate the fact that there's so many good options available. There was plenty of people telling me I'd done the wrong thing with lubricating the linear rails. In part one, before installation, all I did was remove the excess machine oil from the linear rails. But people may not have realized that RatRig have a guide on installation and maintenance of their particular linear rails. What I did was follow this guide to a T for my install, and in future, as required, I'll be following their maintenance guide. Before we move on, I quickly want to give some love to some fellow creators. As you can see, Adam at Vector3D has been building the same printer as mine, so if you want to see the whole build in detail, I've linked his channel in the description. There's also Sam Prentice, who builds awesome Star Wars droids, who has built older rat rigs in the past and is soon to build this model. In fact, I was recently a guest on a live stream of his with the creators of the rat rig, and that was a great honor. Shall we continue with the build? Next up is the so cool kinematic bed. As we continue with our build, again we'll be following the excellent instructions for the rat rig. They'll always be the most up to date reference, so refer to those rather than my video. For the bed, we start by gathering our printed parts as well as the hardware, and that includes the magnets. We follow the usual procedure to pull the nuts into place, and this ensures that they're properly aligned. With this done, we can now place our magnets in each of the three feet and then secure them in place with two countersunk bolts. After this, we have two dowel pins to push into place above the magnets, and we need to be very careful that we don't split the printed part. More nut insertion, this time on the parts that came with the kit, followed by adding them to the printed part to complete the subassembly, and that includes the printed cable holder for the back piece. With the three bed supports now assembled, we can align them with the linear bearing block, bolt them into place, and insert the bottom of the lead screw into the Z-axis couplers. Obviously, this is repeated in the front corners too. We now begin the alignment process, which begins with us loosening the bolts that hold the stepper motor to the frame. We then use a ruler to compare the top and bottom, and slide the stepper motor mount into position, 
retighten the mounting bolts, and a final tighten as well for the linear rail. Next, we introduce one of my favourite parts of the kit, the bed plate, which is very thick, very heavy, and very flat. We have three mounting points that have a bolt, a spacer, and then this threaded ball. It's hard to grip, so I wrapped it up in a cloth and lightly used vice grips so I could support it and tighten the bolt without damaging the ball. This is premature, but I couldn't resist, and I installed the bed in place on the printer. By purposely moving one of the mounting points out of alignment, we can demonstrate that due to the clever design, there's enough play to maintain a good contact patch, even on quite an angle. Back to business, and that meant cleaning off any fingerprints on the underside of the bed plate, before peeling off the adhesive for the Canovo silicon heater, and placing it carefully in the middle. I then smoothed it out and got rid of any potential air bubbles, and later on I'm going to come back and install some insulation to prevent any chance of it delaminating with the bonus of improving the efficiency. We then flip the plate over, once again remove any grease and fingerprints before installing the magnetic base. I eyeballed both of these and somehow didn't butcher it, with the additions on each side appearing to be flat and in the middle. Finally, I installed the PEI powder coated flex plate before installing the bed plate onto the printer for real feeding the heater and thermistor wires through some braided sleeving, and securing this with cable ties to the printed mount on the back support piece. And with this, stage seven of the assembly process was complete. And this brings us to the main event, printing and assembling the EVA modular carriage. In the last video I asked, which extruder should I use? The Orbiter with an E3D V6 was the most popular choice, and that's handy because it was my preference too. Let's have a look at exactly what we need to do to fit it to the rat rig. When we finished up in part one, we had everything assembled apart from our actual print head carriage. We needed a way to hold our extruder, hot end and secure the belts for motion. And that's where the Ever system comes in. This is a modular print head carriage and this thumbnail tells us a lot as we can see it suits multiple extruder drives as well as multiple hot ends. This rat rig machine is designed to take the EVA system, but it's actually compatible with any printer running the linear rail specs listed on screen that are top mounted. Just by browsing the side, you'll get a good overview of the hardware that's supported. And although this printer is a Core XY, we can see we have versions to support Cartesian as well as IDEX 3D printers. Development is quite active and support for even more hardware is on the horizon. The reason this design is so adaptable is because it's modular. No matter what configuration you're printing, the following parts will be included. We have a universal front with mounting to suit various hot ends. They're secured with the face piece. For instance here are the face components to suit an E3D V6. But if you were to switch to a mosquito or other design, you simply print the face parts to match and the rest of the carriage will remain as is. The top section is what interfaces with your extruder drive. We have versions of the file that I need to suit the orbiter, but we can also use an E3D Hemera, Bontech BMG, or a simplified top piece to take a Bowden tube. The bottom piece is fairly universal and supports the fan duct, and for this there is a default design as well as variations to suit different hardware specs. For end stops, again we have a choice of parts depending on what we're using. And the same goes for bed probes, with the BL Touch and inductive probes both supported. Because the rat rig uses this ever modular carriage, you can choose whatever hardware that you want. And for me, that's an Orbiter V1 and temporarily an E3D V6, as I've ordered a new Mosquito Magnum hot end. So when that comes, I simply print the face parts for that design and fit it to the printer. The best part is that it's all open source. And that means there are many community contributions to expand the system even further. Let's have a look at my prep and assembly. For my rat rig, I'm running an Orbiter as well as an E3D V6, at least until the Mosquito Magnum hot end arrives. In case you didn't know, I've actually made a whole video on this extruder before, where I found the parts high quality, the whole thing lightweight, and since then, it's been high performing and reliable on my second SK Go. The design has since been updated to version 1.5, and that includes a design change to constrain the filament path after the drive gear. The version 1 I was using, however, had a gap here, so for best performance, one of the components could be ground down to match the filament exit. I noticed in making this video that the V1 Thingiverse page has been updated with a guide on how to do this quite neatly. 
with a great instructional video by Frank Gore showing how to use a drill and a file as a lathe substitute. I used a variation of this using a pedestal drill, files and then sandpaper to get a much cleaner result than the first time. As you can see, the modified heat break sits very nicely inside, but most importantly, the performance is excellent with smooth and repeatable loading and unloading of the filament. A reminder that the version 1.5 is ready to go without modification, so that's what I've linked in the video description. With that out of the way, let's move on to printing the parts. We have some general print guidelines as well as an interactive graphic to show which way to place the parts on the print bed. After that, we come to the page for the drive that we're using, and from here, all of the printable parts will be linked so you can download the STL. The only change for me, due to using the older design orbiter, was having to follow this link and download the parts of the same name from this previous revision on GitHub. I also located and downloaded the appropriate end stop mount, BL Touch probe mount, and finally the face parts for the E3D V6. I chose to print these parts on my Prusa Mini because it has a smaller and more precise nozzle. It's starting to get pretty cold here at night, so I also opted to print inside the Wham Bam pop-up enclosure. This should keep warping to a minimum and maximize part strength. After a while, I had all of my parts printed and ready to go. Some of them I had to reprint because I positioned them in the wrong orientation, but at least that gave me some spare pieces to test the strength of, and I'm pleased to report everything was fine. I did my usual favored technique to remove fine stringing, located the Ever Hardware pack, laying everything out neatly, ready to go. The instructions on the rat rig page are for a BMG and E3D V6. Obviously some of my components are different, but it's still easy to follow. For instance, step one, I just use the orbiter part rather than the BMG one. We begin by installing the micro switch for the end stop on the mount and then the mount inside the top piece. And as you can see, this is adjustable. We retain our previous technique of using a bolt to pull any nuts into place. And with this done, we're ready to add the top part to the machine. The linear bearing block is waiting for us on the machine, so we lower the top part down and secure it with four M3 bolts. Even without adjustment, the end stop already lines up nicely with the stopper. Our belts have just been dangling in free air since the last part of the build. For the two belts on the rear of the carriage, we take the printed tension blocks and we push the belt ends into them. We now introduce the back piece, prepped once again with nuts in place, insert the tension blocks into the openings and use M5 bolts to secure them. We now introduce our universal front piece, again prepped with nuts, and we use the printed clamps to secure the remaining loose belts. The front, top and rear piece are all then connected at the top by two long M3 bolts. The bottom piece is then lifted up into position before another two long M3 bolts hold the bottom end of the carriage together. As you can see, the belts are very floppy, so I loosen the holders on the front and pull through the excess before retightening the clamps and then using the M5 bolts to tension the belt system. At this stage, all I've done is a preliminary tighten and I'll come back later on and ensure that both of them are even to make sure the gantry is square. Next up is the part cooling fan duct. We offer it up from underneath and two M3 bolts secure it from the rear. It's now time to introduce the hot end. And as usual, we prep some trap nuts before bringing it to the machine. We have this separate heatsink supporting lower piece that screws onto the carriage first, and then the rest of the face pieces holding the hot end are added to the top with more bolts to hold them in place. The system uses a length of PTFE tube to join the drive and the hot end, and I used trial and error, cutting it down gradually until it was the perfect length. This meant I could then secure the orbiter from above using two M3 bolts into the M3 lock nuts I had positioned earlier. This shroud face is optional, but we still need to install the heatsink fan, and we do that with another four M3 bolts going into nuts we inserted earlier. We're gonna finish everything up with some cable management parts, the installation of the part cooling fan, and finally our probe mount, for me, a mount for a BL touch. And with that, stage eight of the Rat Rig V Core 3 build is complete. Looking at it now, it's an impressively compact design, and I really like how components are balanced between the front and back to keep weight distribution even. Before we finish, we're going to assemble the optional spool holder. 
there's a threaded rod which acts as a spine in the printed mount. Then we have a central rotating piece that has a bearing on either side that can be tapped home followed by a good luck karate chop. This piece then slides onto the lead screw and is retained by a locking collar before finally a knob screws on that would hold the filament roll, the whole lot being able to rotate freely thanks to the bearings in the middle. You can pretty much install this wherever you like on the 3D printer frame. M6 bolts and T-nuts are used. And finally we have this little filament guide which bolts into place and has an opening to let the filament in. And that's it, the entire mechanical assembly complete. I am excited. So far, I really like this design and I really like how convenient it is to customize it. In the next episode, I'll complete the wiring and set up Clipper on the SKR Pro and Raspberry Pi 4. That will bring the machine to life, almost ready to print. In the next video, I'll try and address the most common responses, so head down to the comment section now to leave your questions and feedback. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy building a large Core XY 3D printer kit. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.